Hello students, uh, in today's video we will discuss management of uh, diarrhea and the use of anti-diarrheals, a complete comprehensive overview. Now as per WHO, diarrhea is defined as three or more loose or watery stools in a period of 24 hours. Now diarrhea can be acute or it can be chronic. Now acute diarrhea lasts no longer than two weeks while chronic diarrhea lasts for more than four weeks. Now, acute diarrhea is usually infectious, uh, but mostly it is uh, self-limited and cures of its own within four to five days. Now, primary goal or primary therapy is to prevent dehydration. So, replenish water and electrolyte loss uh, by the administration of oral rehydration therapy that is ORT. Now, non-specific anti-diarrheal drugs like anti-secretory drugs, anti-motility drugs may be used for symptomatic relief of diarrhea if required. Now, since acute diarrhea is uh, mostly self-limited and cures of its own, antimicrobials are not required. However, specific antimicrobials may be prescribed if mild self-limiting watery diarrhea becomes severe and see, symptoms persist for uh, more than one week. For example, in the case of traveler's diarrhea. Now, if uh, there is fever and or blood in the diarrhea, uh, for example, diarrhea caused by Shigella or Campylobacter jejuni, then also specific antimicrobials are prescribed. Uh, now, apart from this, if uh, immune compromised patient, uh, for example, patient with HIV or patient with hepatitis B virus suffers from diarrhea, then also specific antimicrobials are prescribed. So this was about acute diarrhea. Now chronic diarrhea is usually non-infectious non and it is usually caused uh, due to illnesses like uh, inflammatory bowel disease, irritable bowel syndrome. Uh, then malabsorption syn syndrome. So primary therapy is to treat the underlying cause of uh, diarrhea. Now chronic diarrhea can be caused because of a uh, few infections also like uh, uh, infection with the uh, Clostridium uh, difficile and uh, then uh, infection with the protozoa and giardia lambia and uh, these two infections can be treated uh, with the administration of antimicrobial for example. Uh, metronidazole. Uh, now let's uh, discuss treatment of diarrhea. Now primary goal of therapy is to is to prevent uh, dehydration so replenish water and electrolyte loss. Now oral rehydration therapy is suitable for patients with signs and symptoms of uh, mild to moderate dehydration. In severe dehydration intravenous rehydration should be given immediately and very important to note that uh, zinc should be added uh, along with oral rehydration solution for 10 to 15 days in children with acute diarrhea as the zinc supplementation has been found to be very useful in pediatric patients. Now second is the proper nutrition. Uh, proper nutrition should be provided to patients of uh, diarrhea and a low fiber bland brat diet is uh, recommended and the probiotics can also be added to the diet. Then uh, there are two types of drug therapies. Uh, one is the non-specific anti-diarrheal drug therapy to provide symptomatic relief of diarrhea. Now it consists of uh, absorbents, anti-secretory drugs and anti-motility drugs. Absorbents like uh, sphagula, methyl cellulose, carboxymethyl cellulose. Anti-secretory drugs like uh, resicodotrin, anticholinergics like atropin, octreotide and anti-motility drugs like uh, diphenoxylate and loperamide. Now apart from the non-specific anti-diarrheal drugs uh, which provide symptomatic relief in diarrhea, there are specific antimicrobial therapy. Now this is prescribed uh, when acute, mild, self-limiting diarrhea becomes severe and persists for more than one week. And secondly, this antimicrobial therapy is regularly prescribed in uh, several infectious diarrhea like uh, amoebiasis, giardiasis. So now let's uh, discuss uh, this management of diarrhea in detail. 
Uh, now let's uh, first understand significance of uh, rehydration in the management of diarrhea. Now as we all know that if a person suffers from diarrhea, primary goal of therapy is to prevent dehydration and uh, uh, so as to uh, replenish water and electrolyte loss. So as per WHO and UNICEF, oral rehydration therapy should begin at the first sign of diarrhea to prevent dehydration. Now, if the loss of fluid is mild, that is 5 to 7 percent of body weight or moderate, that is 7.5 to 10 percent of body weight, then oral rehydration therapy should be instituted immediately. Now, if the loss of fluids is severe, that is more than 10 percent bo body weight, then intravenous rehydration should be given. Uh, now, let's uh, see to the basic components of uh, rehydration fluid. Now, the rehydration fluid consists of uh, sodium chloride. Uh, now, sodium chloride is added to the ORS to cover up substantial loss of sodium in diarrheal uh, stools. Then, uh, potassium chloride is uh, again added to ORS to make up loss of potassium in the watery stools. Uh, then, uh, trisodium citrate corrects metabolic acidosis. Uh, then glucose is essential as glucose facilitate absorption of sodium in the ileum and the water is also again very important. Uh, now WHO has recommended that uh, all children uh, less than 5 years of age with acute diarrhea should be given ORS along with zinc supplementation for 10 to 14 days. Now, zinc supplementation along with the oral rehydration solution has been found to reduce the duration and uh, severity of the episodes of acute diarrhea and it also reduces reoccurrence of diarrhea for the next two, th two to three months. Now, zinc supplementation along with the oral rehydration solution has been found to be useful as it uh, inhibits chloride secretion uh, thereby reducing fluid secretion in the intestine. Uh, it may also strengthen immune response and help in the regeneration of intestinal epithelium. Now for complete information on ORT uh, that is the oral rehydration therapy, uh, you can refer to my video on antidiarrheals part 1. Uh, while for intravenous rehydration you can refer to my video on antidiarrheals uh, part 2. Uh, now, uh, nutrition plays a very important role in the management of diarrhea. Now, patients should be fed with simple low fiber food uh, that is a bland bread diet uh, where B stands for bananas, R stands for the rice that is a white rice, A stands for the applesauce and T stands for the toast that is a white toast. Now, starvation reduces intestinal uh, brush border, disaccharides enzyme. Uh, thereby reducing absorption of sodium, water and nutrients uh, which may lead to malnutrition and therefore patients should not be starved. Now apart from this uh, probiotics could also be added to the diet. Now probiotics are dietary supplements uh, containing live beneficial bacteria like uh, lactobacillus species, bifidobacterium, streptococcus facilis in adequate amounts. Now, illnesses like uh, GIT infection or human immunodeficiency virus, use of antibiotics alter gut flora and probiotics restore healthy gut flora and they prevent colonization of pathogenic uh, bacteria also. Now, healthy balance of uh, gut microflora regulates bowel movements relieving diarrhea as well as constipation. Now, even though probiotics significantly reduce antibiotic associated diarrhea, acute infective diarrhea, strong convincing evidence for their efficacy in diarrhea is lacking and therefore probiotics are not accepted as a component of standard diarrheal therapy. Now, rarely these uh, probiotics can cause systemic infections like acidosis, excessive immune stimulation in immunocompromised patients. And for complete information on uh, probiotics, refer to my video on antidiarrheals part 3. Uh, let's uh, discuss the role of uh, non-specific antidiarrheal drugs in the management of diarrhea. These are of three types, absorbents, anti-secretory drugs and anti-motility drugs. 
absorbents like uh, sphagula methyl cellulose and carboxy methyl cellulose these are colloidal bulk forming agents they absorb water and swell in the intestine thereby increasing uh, consistency of stools and they reduce the frequency of stools and they are useful in conditions uh, like the diarrheal phase of irritable bowel syndrome and they increase the consistency of feces in colostomy patients now anti secretory drugs include drugs like uh, resicadotrel atropin octreotide now resicadotrel it is a encephalinase inhibitor and it prevents a breakdown of uh, encephalines and this increases endogenous encephalines encephalines are opioid receptor agonist uh, they decrease intestinal mucosal cyclic amp and thereby uh, decreasing hypersecretion and uh, they are useful in short term treatment of uh, secretory diarrhea side effects are drowsiness nausea vomiting flatulence now atropin is uh, uh, exhibits Uh, re reduction or reduce motility by virtue of its uh, anticholinergic effect and it reduces secretion also and it may provide relief in uh, drug induced diarrhea like uh, diarrhea induced by neostigmine diarrhea induced by metoclopramide and it also provides a symptomatic relief in dysenteries and uh, diverticulitis octreotide is a somatostatin uh, analog and uh, is it is a very potent anti secretory and anti motility uh, agent uh, it is used in refractory diarrheas for example uh, diarrhea in patients of aids and it is also used to control diarrhea in carcinoid and uh, vasoactive intestinal peptide secreting tumors however octreotide is administered by subcutaneous injection now uh, a uh, next type of uh, non specific anti diarrheal drugs are the anti motility drugs uh, these are opioid drugs and they provide symptomatic relief in diarrhea now major action of these drugs is mediated through peripheral uh, mu opioid receptors which are located in the enteric nervous system and the uh, stimulation of mu opioid receptors decreases motility now second receptors on which these uh, drugs act are the uh, delta opioid receptors which promote absorption and inhibit secretion so these agents uh, by reducing motility they decrease the propulsive movements now uh, there are two main drugs one is the diphenoxylate and then another is the loperamide let's first talk about uh, diphenoxylate it is a synthetic opioid receptor agonist it uh, stimulates peripheral mu opioid receptors which are located in the enteric nervous system and by stimulating these receptors it uh, decreases motility reduces uh, propulsive movements prolong gastrointestinal transit and exhibit anti diarrheal effect now diphenoxylate is absorbed systemically it crosses the blood brain barrier producing uh, central nervous system effects however the abuse liability is low now in order to prevent the abuse liability of uh, diphenoxylate it is available as a diphenoxylate atropin combination and uh, 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 the drug is uh, termed as lomotil now atropin is added in uh, sub pharmacological doses to diphenoxylate to prevent uh, abuse or misuse of diphenoxylate uh, overdose of combination reduces anticholinergic side effects of atropin like nausea bloating tachycardia dryness of mouth and eyes and uh, these symptoms prevent overdose and thus misuse of uh, diphenoxylate now uh, diphenoxylate is contraindicated in children less than 6 years as it can cause respiratory depression paralytic ileus and toxic megacolon in children and uh, it should not be administered in uh, infectious diarrhea as uh, prolongation of gastrointestinal transit time can lead to bacterial overgrowth release of endotoxins in the blood which can cause septic shock and it can also precipitate toxic megacolon in patients with the acute ulcerative colitis now another anti motility drug is the loperamide loperamide exhibits major peripheral new opioid receptor agonistic activity and additional weak anticholinergic activity now uh, since it acts upon uh, mu opioid receptors it is an agonist of uh, mu opioid receptors it uh, reduces propulsive movements decrease motility and also prolong uh, gastrointestinal transit 
and uh, exhibit anti diarrheal effect and by virtue of its anti cholinergic activity it inhibits secretion now it crosses blood brain uh, barrier in negligible amount and therefore it rarely produces a central nervous system effect and uh, shows no abuse liability uh, duration of action is 12 hours and uh, most common side effects are abdominal cramps rashes it is uh, contraindicated in children less than 4 years of age as it can cause paralytic ileus toxic megacolon with abdominal distension in young children uh, it is uh, uh, contraindicated in acute infective diarrhea as with the uh, diphenoxylate uh, it can be used uh, carefully in mild inflammatory bowel disease but it is completely contraindicated in uh, severe inflammatory bowel disease and for complete information on uh, non specific anti anti diarrheal drugs you can refer to my video on anti diarrheals part 5 now after uh, non specific uh, anti diarrheals let's understand uh, the role of specific antimicrobial therapy in diarrhea now as we all know that uh, self limiting watery diarrhea cures of its own within 4 to 5 days so antimicrobials are not uh, required but the uh, but these antimicrobials might be useful in severe disease uh, uh, like for example uh, if the uh, disease or the diarrhea persists for more than one week now example is the travelers diarrhea travelers diarrhea is a self limiting di diarrhea but uh, severe cases can be treated with uh, rifeximin now another is the watery diarrhea caused by enteropathogenic e coli it's uh, uh, this diarrhea is common in infants and here cotrimoxazole uh, then uh, fluoroquinolones namely ciprofloxacin uh, norfloxacin or colistin may be prescribed now regular use of anti microbials is recommended in uh, uh, in uh, diarrhea uh, like for example cholera uh, tetracycline is found to be effective in cholera then uh, diarrhea due to the use of antibiotics now antibiotics cause overgrowth of uh, clostridium difficile which can cause diarrhea now it is treated uh, with metronidazole and alternative is vancomycin then uh, diarrhea is also caused because of the infection with the uh, uh, antamoeba histolytica and uh, it can also be caused because of the infection with the protozoan that is a giardia lambia so amebiasis and giardiasis these are treated with metronidazole uh, so this is in brief on uh, specific antimicrobial therapy now for more information on the role of uh, antimicrobials in diarrhea you can refer to my video on anti diarrheals part 4 So this is all about the management of uh, uh, diarrhea and the use of uh, anti diarrheals. Uh, now please note that the information provided in this video is meant exclusively for students from their examination point of view and uh, therefore kindly consult a physician for the treatment of uh, diarrhea or for the use of anti diarrheals. Now if you find the video useful kindly like subscribe and share this video. Thanks for watching this video.